Hello everybody. If you're looking for a vlog about how to create your own self-drafted jersey tee dress, this is the vlog for you. I'm gonna show you how to do it and give you loads of hints and tips. So let's get started. Right everyone, I have had multiple questions when wearing these dresses about what the pattern is. So I've got this gorgeous one here, this one here, and the original, which is this one here. So as you can see, they all look different. And I based them on a bodice I already had and created my own gathers, etc. Every time I wear them, people ask me what pattern. Well, here's the answer for you. There isn't a pattern, but I'm going to teach you how so that you don't need to buy any more patterns, spend any more money. And if you've already got jersey, like I have, hanging around at home, we can turn it into something amazing today. So first thing you need to do is sort through your stash and what you're looking for, your pattern stash, and what you're looking for is a bodice block that you like. So it could be a t-shirt one, it could be something like I've used the Westcliff um, back bodice piece. If you've got um, uh, like any of the like t-shirts where it's like a traditional t-shirt shape, so not a drop shoulder. I've recently downloaded the free Closet Core t-shirt, so that would work perfectly. The Tilly and the Buttons Freya, Tilly and the Buttons Agnes, any of those will work for this because what you're looking for is that bodice shape. So if I just hold these up again, if you look at this one, you can see it's a straightforward bodice shape, front and back, front I did a V-neck. This one, I did a higher neck. I normally cut the neck quite high when I draft it and then adjust the neck afterwards. I actually decided I really liked the higher neck on this one because when I wear a necklace with it, it, it creates a really interesting look. So if I just show you, it's the same sort of traditional shape, but a much higher neck this time. And then the last one I've got, I went for quite a low scoop neck. I think I had to use a dinner plate to cut the nice curve on this neckline. And that's the thing, look for things around the house. So there we go. So you can see very straightforward, but look a nice scoop on that one. When you're cutting the bodice for this, you won't need as long as a normal t-shirt. So you need to decide, let me just take this off a minute, where you want it to sit. So my natural waist is here. You might like it more empire lines, you might want it here. I normally aim for around my natural waist because then if I want to put a belt on, it's sitting in the right place. So you've got several options. There's one, cut it long to the length that the pattern is and then cut it off or measure the pattern and cut it. Obviously you need to leave a bit for um, uh, seam and join into the skirt, but you could also leave more and always make it shorter later. So if I hold this up to my body, you can see here, it's right on the waist. Let me do it there, right on my natural waist. So that's what I know as length works well for me. So you could put on something you've already got and look at what length you like or cut it longer and you can always adjust it. Remember that because it's jersey, if you pin and test, test it, the weight of the skirt is going to pu pull it down. So this one is a super bouncy jersey. I'll show you what I mean. When I hold it, oh, where's the top? When I hold it up, watch how it bounces. Look at that, yeah? So the weight of all of this gathering and skirts will lengthen the bodice slightly, but it also depends on how much give is in the jersey you've got, if it's got four way give. So look at that, the way that stretches that way. But this one, I don't think from memory, has as much four way stretch. It has two way, but yes, look, hardly any four way. So that one, didn't pull down with the weight of the skirts and this fabric is lighter so it had less weight so if I weighed them the weight of the skirts in this versus this this is way heavier so these are the things you need to think about is that the skirts will pull the jersey down if it has four-way stretch if it only has two-way stretch going across it won't pull it down 
this one since I've worn it a bit the sleeve has got a bit baggy and again I think it's just not as got as good recovery so you want to then decide on your sleeve now I went for a three quarter length on this one full length sleeve on that one and this one I went for a balloon type sleeve with a cuff same armhole on all of them and I used I think Till in the Buttons Freya for the sleeve on those two and just cut it to the length I want you're going to ask me what sleeve I used on this aren't you I think it's the rosary apparel um, she does a, a puff sleeve like a, a, a medium and a strong one I might have even used the patina blouse if not you look through your pattern stash and find a sleeve with the sort of shape you like but again remember because it's jersey this is going to pull down it won't have that length of puff unless you put a sleeve head in here i've just noticed a hole forming <laughs> underneath the armpit there so once you've made those decisions the skirt is fairly straightforward i do rectangles i've also learned what length of tier suits me and so I do the length of tier very um, similar each time. So the first length of tier comes to just around my knee area. Then I do another one. Now this one, I added a mini tier on the bottom. On these other two, I didn't. So you can see I've got the long tier and then the short one. So what I normally do is do the full width of the fabric for the first tier. So then gather it at the top. And the second one, I do... Uh, like a, a length and a half or two lengths depending on how much gathering I want. I do the traditional gathering style um, even though it's jersey so I gather and pull it and then fit it to the bodice. You could use um, like I've got I've got an over like a gathering foot um, or you could try stretching the top to it I did that and I didn't like the way it looked because it gives quite a different look so that would not be my recommendation you might want to try it you could do a test on a piece, on a scrap so now I've given you the overall I'm going to do a mini bit of a sew along because I'm going to make myself another one in this fabric and so if you want to do it with me go and find your fabric and we'll do it together so this fabric's got one uh, two Yes, it's got four way stretch, so I know that the skirt is going to pull the top down slightly. So I am going to go and choose a bodice block to cut out the top and cut everything out. And then we'll look at the pieces and look at the next steps. So go and find a bodice block that you like um, for the top. This one would be an interesting one, wouldn't it? Because then you could attach the skirt. I'd probably do it a bit slimmer, it's quite wide, but this is a free pattern called the One Hour Top by Fancy Tiger Crafts. So, so go and find a bodice block, get your cutting stuff out and cut out your top and then we'll do the next bit together.
okay so now I've cut out my two bodice pieces so there's the back and there's the front I'm going to go and attach these together and just try them on because when you're making something like this where well it's just a bit like a twirl isn't it so I'm going to try those on I have cut as you've just seen in the video the first layer so I'm going to join that down and put the gathering stitches on I'm not going to do the arms yet sometimes I do them at this point because I like to do it when it's open but I don't know what arm sleeve style I want I think in possibly an Agnes style so I'm not 100% on that yet the gathered thing so I'm going to attach these check I'm happy attach the first gather and then we'll go from there Okay, so this is important to try this on. Yep, that's working perfectly. And yep, look, there's my waistline. So with the, the gathers added on, still not sure what kind. I do think I want an Agnes sleeve, you know. Checking it's at the back. A yep. little bit loose at the back, but I think that'll be okay. So I have layer one here. Turn it in the right way. So it's just a rectangle. I've got to gather it, but you can see then, wiggle, 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 how that's going to gather into there. Okay, while I'm gathering the stitches, I thought we'd just have a little chat. So like, I've done the, the gathers in yellow, uh, top tip, easy to unpick, easy to see. Uh, so while I just gather these, um, various things I do is I don't do a continuous gather all the way around. I break it because then if like a part of it broke or something, it's not the whole thing. I do do the traditional two layers but I still break it and overlap them because then it, it gives you a little backup then if a piece of it breaks because I often use the cheaper th threads when I do gathering or threads I've got from charity shops, things like that and it gives you that extra layer of protection if it's not one continuous thing you don't lose the whole <laughs> gather then even though I know the second layer can help with that so uh some people might say there's lovely patterns like the Nomi dress pattern out there by Sew so Over It that you could get to do this. Why do this yourself? Okay, well, number one, because this I haven't had to spend any money to buy a pattern or any paper, additional paper to print and cut out a pattern or any cost on that. It's already pattern pieces I have. Obviously, if you're a, a newer sewist and you don't have one yet and a pattern that would work, then that gives you the chance to consider whether you'd buy one that offers you the flexibility of doing more things with it than just the T-shirt dress. The other reason I like, to, well, there's more than one other reason. The next reason I like to do it is because I love the creativity of coming up with my own designs and my own ideas. I love the flexibility of the fact that I can play with the neckline and the sleeve style. But the other reason I like to do things like this is because it it, it keeps me being a thinking sewist. And sewing for me is a creative pursuit. And sometimes I want to follow instructions. Sometimes I want someone else's instructions because I want to learn something I don't know how to do and um, sometimes I want a non-thinking so where I'm just following the steps but other times with things like this I love the opportunity to be creative 
there we go so i've done the gathering so i'm now attaching that to the bodice um i always use clips when i'm sewing with my overlocker never ever use pins because a pin trapped in an overlocker can be dangerous and devastating oh i should have that on a t-shirt shouldn't i so after i've gathered this i will overlock this together the overlocking will take away some of the gathering stitches um, but right at the end when i finish i will um, pick out all the yellow and the yellow will stand out and make it easy to do that see look how over generous i was with my gathering i've got all of that spare there so i'm going to go back round to a loop back round and release some um, I do hope if you make one of these using my uh, technique that you let me know because I'd love to see what people create. So right sides together, clipped in place all the way around. Look at all my clips there. So now I'm just going to overlock that and then I'll be back. So for this layer, I'm going to do two widths of this. So I'm just checking I've got the right size as i've done it before i might as well do it the same this one's got a little frill on the bottom as well and make sure i leave a little bit for seam allowance now i know i free hand cut so you might want a ruler or something but i free hand cut them all i've never had a problem no. So now I'm going to join that into one giant circle and then do loads of gathering and attach it to the layer I already have. I've got enough here left to cut out the sleeves. Okay, so it's always really important at this stage to try it on because I've got both tiers on and the bodice. There's still time. I've unpicked before and changed things. There's still time before everything is done. So I'm just going to pop it on and I'll turn the camera the other way so you can see. OK, so I've got it on and I can see this here. Um, the sleeve will fix that little bit there, that little gapage. That's better so you can see the full length. So I'm really happy with the two tiers. <coughs> It is loose at the back, but I think with a belt or a bit of elastic here. But I quite like that like that. That's how the um, the other one is. I do wonder if it needs to come up a smidge. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop a belt on and just have a look. And then it is sleeve time. And I think, yes, going for a ruffle sleeve, something like that, just so it's different from the others quite like in this neckline I might bring the lower neck at the back down a bit because I did like a sort of more scoop at the back but overall I'm enjoying it so far so this is a good stage to be at because if you think about it we've got the bodice on tier one and tier two we've got sleeves to do and then decide how we want to finish neck you could finish the neck with like a t-shirt neckband or just hem it you could twin needle it and so on sometimes i don't hem the bottom of jersey skirts because well they're not going to fray and they end up looking bulky if you do so i'm going to go and do some finishing and then i will do some styling things I just need to check I'm absolutely happy with where this waist is sitting. So next time, in a second, you'll see me and it'll be finished and I'll put some styling stills in. I'm not going to show you how to do the sleeve because sleeve is like putting any in. If I know what sleeve, I'll do it when it's open, but this time I wanted to see. So I'm going to go and cut out a sleeve and put it on. Right, okay, so here I am at the end of the sew along. Sorry about all the jingle in there. Here I am at the end of the sew along of the jersey dress. I've got it on. I'm shuffling over because down here I will put video and photos so you can see the, the ruche sleeve I've gone for. You can see how I've styled it because I thought I love a bit of styling and I thought I'd have fun with that. As you can see right now, I've got three different shades of like jade green necklace on. I think it goes really well with silver. I pair it with a waistcoat and a jacket, I think. So 
that's all rolling down the side. So overall, I'm really happy with my fourth version of this self-drafted jersey dress. I really hope you have enjoyed the opportunity to see how to do this for yourself, maybe sew along with me. Um, I hope you love what I've created as well. It's, I mean, who doesn't love a bit of purple? And by the way, purple goes with everything, every colour. I dare you to find a colour that purple doesn't go with and tell me what it is. Um, although purple and brown, I'm not sure I'd wear brown with it, but you could wear like a tan coat with this and it would look great. So, and I know in there is my leopard print brown coat. I'm pretty sure it would look good with it. Um, so, uh, do have a go. I'd love to hear if you have a go and please let me know how it turns out or if you've got any questions please tag me on Instagram if you make one so that I can see your great makes and also if you've got ideas for how I could continue to tweak and evolve this self-drafted pattern. I hope you have a great week and I'll catch you soon.